So if you're talking, whoever watches this video can hear you talking. So um, say hi. But right now, um, <laughs> we're going to try to do this. Really, I did it for the intention of a, lo a lot of people not being here. But hey, I like being wrong. But this time, I normally don't like being wrong. But it's good that a lot of you are here today. But those who do watch it live stream, hey, I'm glad you can do that. And you tune in with us today. So we're going to at least do it today. Maybe do it Wednesday. Um, but we'll just see. Um, but again, I'm glad you are all here today. We're going to start with just a couple quick announcements. Nothing new from Wednesday. Um, the only big thing today is that today is graduation Sunday. Um, for those who graduated high school, get to recognize you today. That's exciting. Gavin and Josh. Yes, exciting. Um, no longer in high school. Move on to adulthood, one step closer. Um, exciting time. And then obviously our high school graduation for our school is tonight at five o'clock. Um, looking forward to that. It's very different than what we normally have done it. But hey, you know what? Gavin's graduating and he really doesn't care. His mom and dad are happy. So, um, so that is today. At 5 o'clock. You don't miss that. Looking forward to that as well. Then, <clears throat> then excuse me, Wednesday, we'll be here 7 o'clock. Lord willing. Let's have some changes. We'll be back up here. Start to get back into the normal flow, routine of things. And um, really looking forward to it. Um, activities, not sure exactly what we're going to be able to do yet. Because I don't know what we can do. Um, things are very limited. A lot of places are not really open yet. So just keep your ears open. We'll do something as soon as possible. And then I'm looking forward to that as we get into our summer um, offering. Um, I do have an envelope. If you do have it, um, I'm going to leave it up here. And um, you can just put it in the bag and just save a lot of things. Or you can give it to me if you want. And we'll just stick it in there. Um, so I had to do that. <clears throat> but really, that's the announcement I do have today. And then we're going to. Um, I'm taking your prayer requests. If you have any, does anybody have anything real quick this morning as we get started? Grace. I have an unspoken. Unspoken, Maddie. My hand. Your hand. Allison. Unspoken. <coughs> unspoken and for Dixon's ankle to get better and masses. All right. <coughs> um, my great grandma fell. She's 98 years old and she broke her hip, I think, yes. and she had to have surgery. But yeah. thankfully, she got through the surgery. Yeah. Um, my eye has been being weird. I don't really know what's happening. So. Grace. Her mom, she broke her toe last night, so it's probably yeah. time to go. Alright. I got a meeting with my recruiter tomorrow. Alright. Exciting times. Anybody else? Um, if you would continue to pray for me, I'm still struggling with um, Bell's palsy, but thankfully, um, Every day is a little bit better in some areas, I and mean, hopefully today uh, won't affect my speaking too much. But again, um, I'm going to go as far as I can. <laughs> um, but thankfully, I'm doing better. Headaches are subsided some, but still getting really bad throughout the day, and that's very painful. But other than that, it's pretty good. My eyes have been the biggest thing. It gets dry really fast if I'm looking at something, reading something, um, or if I'm just sitting down. Um, so. Hopefully today that won't affect my reading. Um, but continue pray for me. I'm glad to be able to do this. I mean, I'm going to do it till I give up, fall over or something. I don't know. Um, but I'm thankful for your prayers. Please don't stop. <coughs> and um, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, one of Dixon's, like, uncles or something. Anyway, somebody they work with. Um, they fell and broke their head open. Mm -hmm. And they were on Ooh. blood thinners. Um, so I think That's they had to go to the good. hospital. So they pray that they can... Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Um, we're going to go ahead and go to a word of prayer. Um, Brother David, would you mind praying for us this morning? Yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the things you've given us, Lord. We thank you for uh, all the teams that are here today. We thank you for the ones that moved up. Pray now, Lord, you would just uh, just move that class, Lord, help us unite, help us go forward for your cause, and pray that you'd give these uh, specific prayer requests for the people that are injured, the people that are hurt. And uh, help them, help them to recover, uh, help the doctors have wisdom as they try to uh, get 
just uh, work their way through the different different things and just pray we just be with all the unspokens. Uh, pray we just be with uh, Brother Dupree as he brings the message. Pray we just uh, allow our hearts to receive what's being taught, allow us to apply it to our lives. Help us to uh, go forward for you, Lord. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. Again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for those watching us today. Um, please let us know that you're watching. Comment there. Share the video out. And if you do watch replay, please comment replay. All right, so this time we're going to jump right into our lesson this morning. So we have as much time as we can today. We're going to, um, as we mentioned um, the last several weeks, uh, and working through a series of our foundation, understanding that we must build our foundation upon a few things. And we mentioned the very first lesson, I don't know if you watched it or not, on um, Facebook, but it was we must build it on Jesus Christ. And that begins with salvation. And that goes on to God's Word. We must build our life on God's Word, base our decisions upon God's Word, not just about how you feel or what mom and dad thinks, no, but what, the, what does the Bible say about your life and what you're supposed to do. And then so we continue to move along with some different things. And then today... We're going to look at our responsibilities. Um, a Christian's responsibilities. Well, what do you mean? Well, you and I have each responsibilities that God has given us. You know, you have responsibilities at home. Maybe, guys, you have to cut grass. Maybe you do a lot of outside yard work. Girls at home, maybe you help mom clean the house. Maybe you do the dishes. Maybe you help cook. We all have responsibilities. But God gives us as Christians specific responsibilities that we must follow. And if we're going to understand what our foundation is, so when you get out into the world, like, okay, you can look back on your foundation and say, okay, God showed me this, I need to do this for my, his word, so I need to follow it. So this will help us. So we're going to look at some responsibilities. I'm splitting this up into two parts because um, there's at least eight of them. Could probably get through most of them today, but for, um, for my physical ability right now, I'm going to do half of them. So we're going to split them up. We're going to look at four major responsibilities that we must have. Remember, these are in a specific order. If they're out of order, we need to, we have what I call misplaced priorities. I mean, what is number one in your life? What is number two, three, four, so on and so forth? So we must make sure that we have the right responsibilities. And we're going to look at these today that, um, that God has given us. We're going to, there's not a major key text we're looking at this morning. We're we'll kind of jumping all over the place today. But again, I'm not going to give you any truth without the Bible. Because you can always dispute what I'm saying, but I'm not going to do that. I want you to know what I'm telling you is truth from the Bible. Remember, that's our foundation. If God's Word is not your foundation, we're on sink and sand. We must be careful that we're not building our life on God's Word. So we're going to look at um, our priorities or our responsibilities. First and foremost this morning, your responsibilities is to our Lord <coughs> and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10.31, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So our responsibilities are to God. Why do you do the certain things that you do? Is it just because I want to? Is it just because I need money? Or just because I want to make mom and dad happy? I just want to make sure my teacher's happy? Or do you, or do, you do it to make God happy? Is God your first priority or your responsibility? Everything that you do, making sure that you do it for Him. You are, as an individual, as a teenager, me as an adult, we are to love, honor, and serve Him, and you are to reverence and obey Him and His Word. The Bible also says in Matthew 22, verse 36, Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. We are to do that. We are to love Him with our whole being, not to give up in just a little little bit of area, but to give Him our everything, making sure that He is our number one. Is God your number one today? Is your number one responsibility, or are you your number one, or your boyfriend or girlfriend or mom and dad? Or, or but God has to be our number one. So examine now as we as we go through these important responsibilities see where your where, where Christ lies in your life is he number one or is he number eight make sure that he is number one also in Mark excuse me Mark 12 verse 30 again Christ here in Mark's gospel says the same thing we just read in Matthew 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Why? This is the first commandment. Christ commands us to love him with everything. So if, he, if this is the first commandment, this should be our first responsibility. That everything we do, eat, sleep, drink, study, play, work, belongs to Christ. The responsibility is that we're doing it for Him. Yes, we want to work hard because we need, need money. Yes, we want uh, mom and dad to be pleased with our lives. We want uh, people, we want those things, but ultimately God has to be first. Christ or the Lord is our first responsibility. We are to do all to Him. But why should we do that? Why is He our first responsibility? Why should we do all these things for Him? Well, Romans chapter number 14 tells us why. One of many verses, actually. Romans 14, verse 12 says, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Did you know we're going to stand before God one day and give an account for our lives? He's going to call you by name and show you and tell you all what you did in your life, whether it was good or bad. And honestly, if you just stop and think about it a little bit, that's pretty scary. Like, oh my goodness, stand for God. He's going to tell me all the bad things I did. Is everybody going to hear? Or is it just me and God? I have no idea. But God is going to give us a count of our lives. So right there, that should help us and motivate us to know, like, all right, God, you have to be first. I want to do all I can to please you. I want to do right by you. So if we live that way, knowing that we're going to stand before God one day, we're going to live a different life. Not a scare life, but a life of reverence and honor or respect to God. Because we're going to give an account one day. So our responsibilities, first and foremost, are to the Lord. Not to ourselves, but to the Lord. Our second responsibility is to our family. Our families. You know, um, my, everybody in here, uh, we see you guys are teenagers, so living at home. So your responsibility is to your mom and dad to obey and to listen to respect them my responsibility is yes I have my parents no I'm not living under their house in their house anymore I just want to love them and to obey them to an extent they're not going to like tell me to go to your room like that would be you know they, they really want to do that but I just want to love them my responsibility now is as a husband and now a father so those are my responsibilities yours yours very little different than mine because you're not married yet but we all have responsibilities to our family. You know, as we hear all, I've heard a lot, God is number one, family's number two. All right? That's, that's always your one and two. God and family. You know, I serve in this ministry, but God and family come before this ministry. Because whatever he has for me, because God said family is important. And we need to make sure that we're doing all that we can to obey our authorities and to take care of our families or to respect them and to have the responsibilities we need to to live that way. This we are to live as a child, spouse, parent, in your family according to the guidelines of the Word of God. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter number 6, responsibility for our parents and children. It starts right there. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why? For this is right. So your responsibility as a teenager, as a child to mom and dad, is to obey them. Why? Because God says so. Just because God's talking about you doesn't leave your parent out. I'm to raise my child like I'm supposed to. In the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, I'm to train them the way they should go. So I have just as much responsibility as you do to obey your parents. Because God doesn't just be down on somebody else. No, he, he, he makes it all focus on everybody. I'm saying here. So we have our responsibilities to obey. You have a responsibility to obey your parents. You know, I never, I didn't always agree with things that my parents made me do. I didn't always do that. And you're probably the same way. <laughs> I didn't like it when I was in the middle of playing Xbox when my parents told me to go clean my room, take out the trash. I didn't like that. But you know what? I had to do that because I love my parents. I need to obey my parents. And you guys need to do that as well. When they tell you to do something, do it right away. You know, as you get older, you're like, man, I'm, I'm becoming an adult now, man. I'm graduating, getting ready to graduate. I'm a senior now, man. I don't have to listen to my parents. 
Yeah, you do. Why? Because the Bible says so. Because this is right. So if we want to have right priorities, right responsibilities, we need to obey mom and dad. You know, the Bible also tells us in the Old Testament that we are to obey as well. In Exodus chapter 20, this is here in the Ten Commandments. God gave this to Moses. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. So we are to obey and we are to honor. This is by showing respect, by doing right by them, to honor them, because they have done a lot for you. You know, you don't, you wouldn't be here today without your parents. <laughs> really true. If you didn't have mom and dad, you wouldn't exist. You know, they do a lot for you, a lot behind the scenes that you don't, you don't know, you won't understand until you're a parent. And now being a parent, I really see it. It's amazing. When you become, become, become a parent, your eyes really open up. But we are to honor them. It's, it's our duty. It's our, it's our responsibility as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, to honor mom and dad. Because if we do that, it says that our days may be, um, may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God hath given us. So a promise here that a longer lifespan, really, by simply honoring mom and dad. We obey because it's right. We honor and we get blessing for doing so. So our responsibilities, first of all, is to the Lord. Make sure that's right. Drill it in your head. Everything you do is for the Lord. Secondly, our responsibilities is to our families. So mom and dad right now. And then one day to your spouse. And then one day you have children. Those are your responsibilities. And will be. So make sure those are your two. Third responsibility that you and I have that we equally share is to our church. We have responsibilities here at church. Well, right now it's being in your place, and you guys are here. Awesome, I love it. I'm glad I don't see many empty chairs today. That's a blessing. So that is your responsibility. It says you are to attend regularly and to pray for your ministries here. And you're to give freely and cheerfully of your time, energy, talent, and money. Like, what? I can't die. I can't do this thing. I have things to do. That's our responsibility, is to give of ourselves. Because remember, who's our first responsibility? To God. So if our responsibilities are in the right order, if God's first, then it's not going to be a problem to be able to give of our talents, our treasures, and our time, and our money, right? Because He is our first responsibility. You know, Paul tells Timothy in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 how we, um, some things of how we ought to behave as Christians, how we ought to act. And if you look in verse number 15 of 1 Timothy chapter 3, he tells us this. It says, he gives us some things about the church. Um, but if thou, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtst to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. So the church is not just a building. Just to make that clear. A church is an assembly. It's a body of saved people baptized believers in Jesus Christ. This is the local church. Not a universal church. This is the local church. And we are to be here as much as we can. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves for even when we see the day approaching. You know, when we were out of church, well, say out of church, not be able to meet in the church building for the last two and a half months, that doesn't mean we're not a church. I believe if we were at home watching it online, we were a part of the church watching it. That's my opinion. But we see here that we are to be faithful in our church. Be in your place. So if you serve in a ministry, whether it's the nursery, whether it's the choir, whether it's on the bus route, whether it's in the sound booth, whether it's just being a teenager here, going on visitation, being in your place, going on activities, that is our responsibilities. That's your responsibility to your church right now. But it's also more than just that. We are to, to give. That means be there. Be in your place. Be here when the church doors open, if at all possible. That means to help out on church days, cleaning days, activity days. That means to, to give to the offering, to give to missions. Those are our responsibilities. If we don't do that, it's disobedience to God. Remember, if God is in our first place, then on being with our family, 
and our church will be doing right. We'll have our priorities in the right place. We must do what we have to do to make sure that we are doing our responsibilities. Because those are your responsibilities. Mine are a little bit different than yours because of my position. <coughs> Not because of the things like that, but we need to make sure we have <coughs> our right responsibilities. And then, fourth thing. So we see the Lord Jesus Christ, your family, your local church. And then number four today is to your Bible. The Bible. You know, you and I, this doesn't switch on anybody. Age, however, we are to read it regularly and to apply it to your life, to my life. That is our responsibility right now with God's Word. Why would you do that? Well, Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light to my path. If you want direction for your life, you want to know what you need to do for your life, read God's word. It is a light and it is a lamp. It gives you direction. Instead of wandering around, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I'm hopeless. No, read the Bible. <laughs> read it. That is your responsibility. That is my responsibility. No matter how old or young you are. It's not just for the seniors in high school to read the Bible. It's for the 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th grade. We are to read it so we can have the direction for our lives. I need direction. The babies need directions. We're, the, we're adults, yes, but we have our lives. We have our families that we've taken care of. We need to know what we ought to do. And we need to be in God's Word. You do. Our responsibilities, these are very important. We cannot neglect them. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Here are Tim, um, we see Timothy, this doctrine is God's word. This is the truth that's in it. We are to take heed to it, to study it, to apply it <coughs> to our lives, to use it. Apply means you know it and you use it. When we do this, it means we continue in them. We keep doing it over and over again because it is our responsibility. It is our duty as a Christian. We do that, go save thyself, and then that hear thee. So God's Word helps us, keeps us going the right path, helps us keep us from sin. And if we do that, we know it. We live this book, we study it, know it, and apply it. We can share it with somebody else and help keep them from doing something they shouldn't do. Maybe give them the encouragement they need to make the right decision. We have the responsibility to be in the Bible. We need to do that. We need to not neglect it. I understand we, we get busy. I understand we have things we have to do. But we must make the time to be in God's Word. Now more than ever. Um, so we can do what God has called us to do. We need to be in it. Study it, read it, and apply it. Why? Because of 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto who? God. Remember, He is our first responsibility. He is the first priority, the first everything that we need to do. We're not reading it just because I'm telling you to read the Bible. I'm telling you that you need to read the Bible because God is telling you to read the Bible. <coughs> and it is our responsibility, our duty. So I just show that self approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to be in it so we can be approved unto God. Because again, why we're giving an account to God one day? People are like, man, you had all this time to read your Bible and you didn't even read it. You wasted time playing video games, playing outside, playing in the swimming pool, I don't know, doing other stuff. We need to make sure that. Our responsibility every day is to be in it. Even if you only have a few minutes because you have things you have to do, I understand that. But make sure that you do that. Make sure your priorities are right. Make sure that we are in it. Because it's going to direct our paths. It's going to help us in the areas that we need help in. Our Bible is important. Study it. Because why? You're going to go out one day, graduate, move on into life, get married, and you want to be able to know the truth. Because you know the world today likes to distort the truth. Just watch the news. But if you want to know truth, go to the source of all truth. It's God's Word. 
So our priorities, our responsibilities, these are the top four priorities. You know, they, that we must make sure that we're abiding by, following by every single day. God has to be one. And to mom and dad, second. To your church. And then to your body. If we don't have these, we're not on the right foundation, guys. It's going to quake. It's going to crumble. Satan's going to tempt you with things. People are going to come by and tempt you with things. And your life is going to fall because you're not on the right foundation. But if we have these four, we're going to be okay. You know, we're still going to make mistakes. We're going to sin. Things are going to happen. But God is going to help us because we're already on the right foundation. We're already doing what we're supposed to be doing. We must have these responsibilities. And the next week, we're going to look at the next four. So you're going to make sure we have these right priorities in our life, these responsibilities, so God can help us in our lives. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you for today. Uh, thank you for giving me the blessings. God, I thank you for the <coughs> Lord, I love them very much. I'm so glad that they are here today. Lord, as we see a full room. Lord, I do ask that you would just bless each and every one of them. Lord, in their lives, Lord, a lot of them uh, continue to grow up and be here in the youth group. Some of them are already leaving us. Just, uh, with graduation, Lord, it's hard to believe. But Lord, I do ask that you just have your hand of protection upon them. Lord, help them now, all of us here, to understand our responsibilities as Christians um, to do what's right and to follow you. Lord, that you just bless us. Lord, be with the services today. Our preacher preaches to us this morning. Graduations tonight. Lord, and all those that are traveling in, Lord, family members, I know they're excited. Lord, and just bless this evening. Lord, be with us now. Give us great work today. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.